Many famous actors and directors saw their careers crash in the late 1990s and early 2000s. Among those who couldn't safely make it through the change of centuries was Brian De Palma. De Palma was one of the biggest directors of the 1980s and 1990s. His films Scarface, Mission Impossible, Carlito's Way, and The Untouchables are well known to everyone. Of course, the director had some failures. Even James Cameron had some in his career. However, there is a big difference between the failure of a $20 million film, Casualties of War, which still gained audience recognition and Golden Globe nominations, and the failure of a $100 million blockbuster criticized from all sides. To make matters worse, it was the director's second failure in a row. Following the success of Mission Impossible with Tom Cruise, Brian De Palma went on to direct Snake Eyes, starring Nicolas Cage in 1998. Although the failure wasn't catastrophic, it did have an impact on the director's career. As for Nicolas Cage, he managed to avoid any consequences, and his career remained unaffected. Anyway, after Snake Eyes, De Palma was widely criticized for his incredible ability to spend millions of dollars on small-scale projects. Therefore, he desperately needed a big hit to end his unlucky streak. He decided to go with Disney's project, Mission to Mars. Originally, the film wasn't planned as a major blockbuster, and was to be directed by Gore Verbinski, known for his previous success with the low-budget movie Mouse Hunt. As soon as Brian De Palma showed interest in the project, the studio rejected Verbinski and increased the Mission to Mars budget from $50 million to $90 million. Gore Verbinski wasn't too upset about it and quickly shifted his focus to The Mexican. A couple of years after that, he released the first Pirates of the Caribbean, all under Disney. Like any prominent director, Brian De Palma started editing the existing script for Mission to Mars to fit his preferences. Disney trusted the filmmaker and granted him complete creative freedom. Graham Yost, the screenwriter behind Speed and Hard Rain, also joined the project to help with the script. However, their collaboration turned Mission to Mars into something completely different. Originally intended as a fun summer adventure, the film turned into a sci-fi drama about encountering alien life. Without fully understanding the potential risks, Disney approved the drastic plot changes and sent Mission to Mars into production. To start filming, the crew had to cover the largest film set in Vancouver, Canada with sand. To make the sand red, they used nearly 14,000 gallons, or 53,000 liters, of red paint. As a result, Mission to Mars had one of the most expensive filming locations in American film history. Each of the spacesuits used in the movie cost around $100,000 to make. Although it doesn't come close to the price of real NASA spacesuits, which can reach $10 to $13 million apiece. Brian De Palma was still heavily criticized for being so wasteful in making the film. The budget began to exceed its limit around halfway through the filming process. According to Hoyt Yeatman, who once won the Academy Award for visual effects for the film The Abyss, meeting the $90 million budget for Mission to Mars was simply impossible because all the film's locations had to be created from scratch. Back then, the sets they needed simply didn't exist. When Disney executives saw the results of Brian De Palma's work in 1999, they gasped. Instead of the fun blockbuster that was supposed to kick off the summer season of 2000, they got a three-and-a-half-hour psychological drama about Mars. The test screenings were a disaster. Consequently, the studio heavily edited Mission to Mars, making the already questionable material completely incomprehensible. Nevertheless, the studio did achieve its goal and shortened the film to one hour and 45 minutes. Assuming that only a strong advertising campaign could save such a film, Disney increased the Mission to Mars marketing budget. The studio's actions resulted in one of the largest failures of the early 2000s. The film faced harsh criticism from critics and failed to attract audiences in theaters. The record-breaking promotion costs did not help improve the situation. On the other hand, without them, the failure could have been absolutely catastrophic. Eight months after Mission to Mars premiered, another film about landing on Mars bombed at the box office. Although Warner Brothers' Red Planet had more action elements, it also failed to attract viewers. 
Despite its $100 million budget, Mission to Mars only made $111 million worldwide. According to estimates from various American publications, Disney lost $100 to $150 million on the movie. The failure virtually destroyed Touchstone Pictures. The studio's financial situation remained dire, even after the success of Gone in 60 Seconds, which was released a couple of months later. In the next couple of years, Disney restructured Touchstone Pictures, leaving only a small division for low-budget films. It is unfortunate, given that Touchstone was once one of Disney's most valuable assets, producing films like Armageddon, Con Air, Pretty Woman, and Pearl Harbor. As for Brian De Palma, he was nominated for a Golden Raspberry for Worst Director and had a major falling out with Disney. All of this harmed the director's career. Nobody was offering him large budgets anymore. Five years after Mission to Mars, De Palma attempted to make a comeback in Hollywood with the independent film The Black Dahlia. The movie also failed, ultimately ending his career. It is difficult to imagine what Mission to Mars would have been like if Gore Verbinski had directed it. Perhaps Brian De Palma saved the aspiring director, and to some extent gave us Pirates of the Caribbean. Or maybe instead of Pirates of the Caribbean, we would now have five to six Pirates of Mars movies, or something like that. By the way, Disney did find a use for some of the Mission to Mars props, which means the money did not go to waste. The ship in the spacesuits made for the film now entertain visitors at Walt Disney World in Florida. Thanks for watching, subscribe, and stay tuned.